Hi everybody, welcome to the first part of the CBBG video series on total organic carbon analysis. The goal of this video series is to get you fully prepared for analyzing your samples on the TOC analyzer. So first, we're going to be focused on TOC background and sample prep. We'll be answering questions like what is the TOC and how does it work? What can I measure with the TOC and how do I need to prepare my samples? TOC stands for Total Organic Carbon Analyzer, and it looks like this. On the left, we have our auto sampler with a sample rack and syringe for injecting samples, and on the right, we have the TOC analyzer itself, which for the most part is a big combustion chamber. Let's take a look at what's actually happening inside the instrument. Here we see a diagram of the flow path for the instrument. Our two main inlets are carrier gas, which is typically some ultra-pure air or another inert gas, and our sample which is injected using an auto sampler. This eight port diverter valve here is a very important part of the instrument since it connects all of the influent lines and controls where the flow is going on the instrument. You'll see it connects the sample, the auto sampler, the oxidant, acid for sample acidification, dilution water, and our combustion chamber, or oxidation reactor as it's sometimes called. Once our sample gets taken into this port, it's either sent to an IC sparger for measurement of inorganic carbon or our oxidation reactor for combustion. It's then dehumidified and scrubbed for halogens and then sent to a non-dispersive infrared detector for detection. The software provided with the TOC can then process the data and it can be collected. I know this is a lot of information to take in, uh, so we're going to briefly discuss each one of these components to help you understand what they do. The first thing that we'll talk about is the carrier gas. This is normally an inert gas used to carry the samples and push flow through the system. It carries our samples through the combustion chamber and the IC reactor into the detector. This picture on the right is what a typical carrier gas inlet looks like. Keep in mind, you're gonna need compressed gas cylinder training in order to operate one of these. The auto sampler is what we use to inject our samples into the instrument. It holds 93 samples in 20 milliliter glass TOC vials. So this is what you'll need to put your samples into. The auto sampler is often equipped with an external sparge kit, which uses these needles to sparge samples with carrier gas. This allows inorganic carbon to be purged from the samples if you're only interested in organic carbon analysis. There's also five bottles on the side of the TOC that need to be checked regularly. Three of them are the hydrochloric acid, the diluent, and the IC reagent, which is phosphoric acid. The acid bottle is used for acidification of the samples, which is nice if you haven't acidified them yourself. Acidification of the samples is necessary for the TOC, and we'll talk about that later. The diluent bottle is also nice, since the instrument actually has the ability to auto-dilute your samples and your calibration curve. As we all know, making calibration curves is a pain, uh, so having the instrument do it for you is a great option. The 8-port diverter valve is one of the most important pieces of the instrument. It collects all the influence, our sample, our diluent, our acid, and our IC reagent to our combustion chamber and our IC vessel. This valve switching positions is what controls the direction of flow in the instrument. It's also arguably one of the easiest pieces of equipment to break because it gets corroded if there's any acid leaks and it has a lot of moving parts to it. Next up in the flow path comes the inorganic carbon or IC reaction vessel and the combustion chamber. The sample is sent to one or the other based on what you're trying to measure. The basic concept of the IC reaction vessel is that in an acidified sample, gas will cause inorganic carbon to be purged as carbon dioxide. This CO2 can then be measured by the detector. Once your sample has been properly diluted, acidified, and maybe sparged or measured for inorganic carbon, it will be injected into the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is packed with an oxidation catalyst and it reaches a temperature of 680 degrees Celsius. The carrier gas will carry your combustion sample through this chamber onto the next steps. After combustion, the sample has water removed from it by a dehumidifier, and then it gets scrubbed in the halogen scrubber to remove things that could damage the detector, like chlorine. The final step in the TOC is the detector, which is a non-dispersive infrared detector. This detects carbon dioxide and outputs a digital signal. This signal gets processed by software, which is then plotted to make peaks, and the area under these peaks is proportional to concentration based on your calibration curve. So now that we understand how the TOC works and what all of its parts do, 
How do we know what we want to measure and how do we make the instrument measure different things? The instrument can measure many different things. TC, IC, TOC, DOC, DIC, DC, and more. What even are all these things? So let's break them down and figure out how you need to prep your samples to measure them. When we compare TC and DC or TOC and DOC, uh, we're talking about total versus dissolved components. So total carbon, dissolved carbon, total organic carbon, dissolved organic carbon, etc. This is entirely a matter of sample prep. If you want to measure total carbon, don't filter your samples. If you want to measure dissolved carbon, filter them. Filtering them will remove any particulates or solids uh, and make sure that the only thing that gets measured is dissolved. So keep that in mind before you choose to measure anything else. So now let's talk about discerning between TC, IC, and TOC. TC means total carbon. It's all of the carbon in your sample. IC is inorganic carbon, which is all of the carbonates, hydrogen carbonates, and carbon dioxide in your sample. And TOC is total organic carbon, which is basically anything that isn't inorganic carbon. The main equation for this is TC, total carbon, equals IC plus TOC. This is a useful equation because the instrument can't actually directly measure TOC, which is what most people want to measure. The, instru the instrument can measure total carbon by combusting the whole sample, and it can measure inorganic carbon by acidifying the sample and sparging out the CO2 and measuring that CO2. Uh, and once the instrument has done this, it can subtract the inorganic carbon from the total carbon to give you a result for total organic carbon. But it's not actually directly measuring total organic carbon. So a lot of times measuring TOC can be tedious because, like I just mentioned, you have to measure both TC and IC. This means you got to make two calibration curves and the run takes longer because the instrument has to measure both of these things. This brings us to NPOC which is a really common strategy for measuring organic carbon, and it's accurate as long as you're not measuring volatile organics. NPOC stands for non-purgeable organic carbon. Basically, you acidify your samples beforehand so that all of the inorganics, like carbonates, are converted into CO2, and then the instrument sparges it using the sparger and the auto sampler. All of the inorganics are now sparged out of the sample, and the instrument can just measure TC uh, the way that it normally would, and you can safely assume that the result is your TOC, but we call this NPOC because it was the non-purgeable organic carbon. Keep in mind, though, that this will not work if you have volatile organics, aka purgeable organic carbon, POC. Uh, sparging, if you have POC in your sample, will result in the loss of some of your organic carbon. All right, so now that you know about how the TOC works and what type of carbon you want to analyze, check out the next video on how to set up and run the TOC. Good luck.